Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to discuss the Pro Workflow for the Headshot plugin. We'll cover all the steps from generating a head to shape adjustments and fixing eye blinking. When we start off, we'll have the default female project loaded in. We can switch this to a male, but first of all, let's load up our image. Keep in mind that it should be a highly detailed 4K image for best results. The current body type is the default female, so let's set that to male, since we have a picture of a dude. From there, let's also set the skin type to beard and skull, so it will more closely match the character we have on screen. After it's finished processing, this is what we'll get on the screen here. You can see the automatic facial production is fairly decent, however there are still a lot of things that can be refined and tweaked. Let's first use the image matching tool in order to refine the shape of the head to more closely match the image. You can use the Shift Q hotkey to load it up. This will create a layover of the original image on the front facing head that we can adjust the opacity for as well as the lens value which will slightly adjust the perspective so we can get a more accurate initial angle to edit the face shape. These parameters can also be found in the plugin panel and include grayscale and contrast so that we can more clearly observe specific facial features in order to more accurately adjust the edges to match the image. Next, let's take a look at Sculpt, Morph, and Sliders. You can use the Shift S hotkey for this one, or toggle it using the button on the toolbar. There are six different Sculpt Morph levels you can choose from. The first one is the basic overall face level, which is used for larger scale muscular edits. The second level is for more detailed edits to the facial structure. The next four are edits to the eye, nose, mouth, and ear areas respectively. All six levels can be accessed via the Z, X, C, V, B, and N hotkeys. Okay, let's take a look at the morph sculpting process now. If we click on the area on the top of the skull, we can click and drag to adjust it, just like the normal morph editing gizmo. You'll notice that when you select different morph areas, that the corresponding slider in the modify panel will become active, and you'll be able to see the slider move simultaneously with your edit. In order to edit one side of the face at a time, make sure you uncheck symmetrical. You can also use the Shift A hotkey to do this. It will also be indicated in the small image to the top right of your viewport. When adjusting the facial structure of your character, it's also important to set image matching on and off at various points to ensure the accuracy of your results and for a better editing experience. You can also turn off the control area display if it blocks your view. Let's move on to more detailed facial structure editing. During this editing process, we we'll want to match the corner of the mouth to the photo, as that was the one glaring issue with the initial model. Generally, it's a good idea during the editing process to toggle your image opacity on and off frequently. Often to get the best results for facial structure editing, you'll want to use a monochrome image with high contrast in order to better see the edges of the character's face and how they align with the respective morph areas. Generally, this process is pretty straightforward. You'll want to use all the different morph levels and areas to gradually and carefully adjust your model's facial structure and shape to more closely match that of your image. In addition to the morph areas in the Headshot plugin, there are thousands more sliders listed in the Modify panel. The eyes are a very delicate area to modify, and even slight changes can completely change the look of the character to something different. Therefore, it's a good idea to make use of all the detailed sliders available here to get your character's eyes as accurate as possible. Finally, let's address the issue at the corner of the lip using the Reproject tool. When the face shape is close enough but the texture has visual flaws after shape editing, we need to reproject the texture to fix the flaws. You can see here that once we do that, the issue will be resolved. Our face looks pretty good from the front, so let's take a look at the side view now. Luckily, we also have a side view photo of our character that we can use to compare here. Again, the process is essentially the same. You'll want to use a combination of adjusting the basic morph areas of your character's face with the Headshot Morph 1000 Plus sliders in order to refine your head shape to the most accurate possible representation. 
Okay, so once you're satisfied with the facial structure of your character, it's time to move on to texture adjustment and refinement. Let's take a look at our eye color presets first. If you look closely, you can see that this character has sort of grayish eyes, so we'll just simply select that preset and move on. For skin type, we currently have beard and scalp selected. Skin type presets here are the same as the ones in the Generate Character panel. If you're not satisfied with the results, you can customize the presets here. Changing presets will affect the textures below. In order to see the changes you've made, you'll need to press Update Skin Textures. The processing time for this will vary according to your max texture size setting. We'll have a future video that goes into a lot more detail on texture adjustment, so keep an eye out for that in the near future. You can see that when we apply the Clean Rough preset, that it gets rid of most of the stubble shadows that were prevalent on the Beard and Scalp preset. The last thing we need to do here is take a look at the Eye Blink settings. If we go into the Attributes tab, we'll be able to close the eyes. You'll see a little bit of texture stretching on the eyelids, which makes them look a little dirty. This can be easily fixed by using the Eyelid Mask Range setting in the Headshot panel. If we select the appropriate one, we can click Update Skin Texture once again to see the refined results. You'll see now that it's much smoother and more natural after the modifications. The last thing we'll want to fix is the intersection of the upper and lower eyelids. In Character Creator 3.2, we offer a new feature called Correct Eye Blink in order to fix this mesh behavior. This can be found up in the Modify menu item at the top. Once it's applied, you'll notice that the eyelashes now follow more accurately along the edges of the eyelids. That's about it for this tutorial guys. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy the new Headshot plugin as much as we do. Don't forget to check out our forums over at forum.reillusion.com as well for the latest troubleshooting and updates. And I'll see you in the next video.